Hello again, folks. My name is Rusty Berg. I'm coming to you from somewhere in the snowy, frosty southeastern Michigan tundra, uh, coming to you from the Antique Automotive Acres. Welcome back. Um, today, we're back to working on Eleanor, my 1914 Studebaker. Uh, I just posted the previous video that explained a little bit about what happened, the accident that I had while driving the car. Uh, again, you might want to go back and take a look. I go over into uh, what parts were broken and what my plan is to fix them. Uh, today, the big thing I've got to get done is I need to remove the wheels off the rear axle of this car. The fronts are already gone, as you can tell. Uh, one of them fell off, unfortunately, that's what's driving this whole project. Um, and get them broken apart so that I can take the associated components down to an Amish uh, wheel right. Yeah, try saying that very quickly. Amish wheel right uh, in... Uh, southern Ohio. Uh, so today I've got to pull the rears off of the, uh, the rear axle of the car so that I can get them out to the shop and start taking them apart. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get things started. So uh, it's going to be tight quarters with the camera uh, while I do this job, so I apologize that it's uh, so close, but uh, this is not my normal shop. I usually just use this garage for storage. Uh, however, we have to do as best as we can with what we've got when we've got it to uh, paraphrase, I believe it was Teddy Roosevelt. So uh, what has to happen is I have to take this entire wheel off and then when I say disassemble it, these wood spokes are pressed into the fellow, and then they have a steel band around the outside of them that is actually used to reinforce the wheel and hold it all together. Um, and what the, wheel, what the wheel right's gonna want is the metal band and the hubs inside, and then he'll make the new spokes and the wood fellow off of the original material as patterns. Um, but to actually get that down to him and to make his life easier and save myself a little bit of cost on the project, I have to get these busted apart, sandblasted and cleaned and primered uh, in paint so that they're ready for him to do his assembly work. Um, kind of a unique feature about the Studebaker, I think I mentioned this in the overview video, if you go back you can actually probably see me go over it, is that this is a full floating rear axle which is more common to heavy duty trucks uh, and it was to light cars. It was a unique feature for Studebaker in the mid-price field. Uh, I can only think of some other cars like Pierce Arrows and Packards uh, worth a lot more money at the time that would run this style of axle. When I say full floating, this axle shaft here, actually give me one second, I'll go grab it. I have a spare. Coming in hot. Okay, here we go. So. Um, make sure I'm back roughly in camera view. So this is a spare axle shaft uh, out of the rear axle and you can see one it's quite beefy uh, although don't forget metallurgy was still very much in its infancy so parts are that look this large while they're generally very stout they're not quite as stout as what you would think in modern tolerances but the whole idea is is this whole axle shaft slides in and is only here to generate the torque to move the wheel. The hub itself here is supported by bearings and those bearings are what carry the weight of the car. Uh, in other axle designs like a three-quarter floating or even just more like a common rear axle like the Model T axle, you can't quite see it but there's a Model T right underneath here, the axle shaft itself actually carries a portion of the weight of the car. It has to do two jobs. One, it has to carry a portion of the weight of the car, and two, it has to carry the torque to twist the wheel. And a full floating rear axle such as this, the weight of the car is removed from the axle itself. That's carried on the bearings in the hub. It only has to carry the twist in it to move the wheel forward to propel the car. So these six nuts 
here are what hold the axle in and it'll literally just slide all the way out and at the end it's got the keyway well not keyway it's the splines which these are massive old style square splines you can even see how they cut them on a horizontal probably a horizontal mill brown and sharp if i had to guess who knows um, there were a couple companies out there making them but you can see that the cutter came in and then it tapers out so they were cutting them in this fashion with a, a slotting cutter to cut and make that square spline which engages with the spider gear inside the differential so uh, the next steps and I think I'll move into a time-lapse type function here is to actually go ahead bust these nuts loose I have had these apart before to go in and grease the bearings so it shouldn't be too bad it just boils down to I had a lot more space the last time I did this. I'm literally this close to the wall. Luckily, just by holding that axle up, I think I'm gonna be able to pull them out because that was my biggest concern is you can't really like wiggle them one way or the other to get them out. They have to come all the way out straight. And I think I've got enough clearance to do that and not run into trouble. So with that, I'm going to uh, go grab some wrenches and uh, start wrenching. All right. Three-quarter inch socket, big old wrench. Let us begin. Okay. Need to get a prying tool. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's see, you should. Come on. It's a tight fit, so you gotta get in. There we go. Let's start to. Come on, there it is. Should be wearing safety glasses with these, by the way. Oh, that's right, I gasketed it down. That's right, great. <clears throat> and emergency brake, so I'm gonna have to take that off, great. Come on. Ah, this is not going well. I'm going to have to run out to the shop and get a proper cold chisel and a proper hammer and some proper safety glasses because I used a little bit of RTV to help seal this back down. So uh, I'll be right back. Let's try again. Proper, more proper prying tools, also proper eyewear um, just in case something goes amiss. But uh, hopefully it will not stay, good dog. This is where our TV was not the right choice, but I also didn't plan on having to come back in here anytime soon. Come on now. Oh, Moses. This is fun. Come on. Because I am mucking up that face badly. Let's see if I can get the pry into it. Come on. 
Come on. It wants to go. Keeps moving on me. Great. Come back here, you. Ah. <clears throat> RTV. Would have known better. It's coming. It's just coming slowly. Definitely gonna have to clean this surface up when the job is done. There it is. Here it comes. Success. I must have missed one. Success. Haha. <laughs> Ooh, sticky. Gear oil, rifle. So, what you can see now, double lock nut. That's what's holding the preload on the bearings that hold this hub on. So, it's just a simple matter, <laughs> I say this, of releasing these tabs, unlocking the, I gotta get my BFH to, uh, not BFH, BFW, big frickin' wrench, to get in here and loosen that nut up and then this should come off easy as pie so let me go find my bf wrench and i'll be right back all right big freaking wrench acquired never been a big fan of using pipe wrenches on stuff like this but eh, sometimes again you got to do what you do you got to do what you got to do I did that. All right, let's see. Thank you. Release the locking tabs. Block the camera. Oh, good. It was only one. And they're locking the bottom one down too. Okay, so let's see. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there we go. And, <clears throat> come on, almost had it. Come on. There we go. Come on. There we are. Oops. Come back here. Going for freedom. One nut. The locking collar. Uh, this one's gonna stink. Yep. 
I remember this one being tough because there's a lip. How did I do this originally? I had to do this somehow. How did I get you off? How did you put your back on? I don't have a socket that big. What did I do? I use a different wrench. I think that's it. I think I use a different wrench because this lip here makes it very hard to get any adjustable style wrench in here. So let me see if I can find the, a better tool to try and get this off. Be right back. Wrench acquired. Not quite the right tool for the job, but again, doing as best as I can with what I've got when I've got it. There we go. This is the nut that actually sets the preload on the tapered roller bearings. So you want this tight, but not rocket tight. Only about quarter of a guten tight, if you will. Um, but this is what actually holds the rear wheel onto the car. So with that, that comes off. And you can see the bearing race inside here, nicely clean and greasy as it should be. And now it should want to work its way off. But what I'm worried is I think the parking brake is set. Yes, it is. Uh, of course it is, which means I got to climb up to <laughs> the car. I've got a ladder on the other side and release it. So I'll be right back. All right, then I think I've got the brake disengaged this time. So let's see. Jiggle, jiggle, pull. Wiggle, wiggle. Come on, dear. You should slide off nicely. Come on. Let's try to get the bearing up. Is this something I should try to do? It's coming. I can see it. There it goes. Come on. Okay, catch the bearing before it comes out. So, remember what I was saying? These are the, uh, the bearings that actually carry the weight of the car. They're a Timken roller bearing, which oddly enough, you can still buy these today. Uh, I think I can. Um, I know some of the cars are still, com uh, some of the bearings on this car are commercially available. I'd have to double check the race number, but that's, uh, you know, 100 plus years of roller bearing history right there. So with that off, it should now very easily a little jiggle twist. And pull Yahtzee. Oh, God, they're heavy. Because <laughs> that's got the whole rear brake drum and everything on it. But there we go. Success. Uh, one wheel off, one step closer to getting Eleanor back on the road. And what you can see here, these are the, uh, the brake systems. So you got your external contracting brake and then the external uh, the in external external contracting band for the brake and then the internal emergency shoes which are just cast iron for the uh, parking brake and then the last bearing I'll go ahead and leave that on there right now it's not hurting anything just sitting there but that's the whole it's the whole way these full floating axles work is, is this tube here which is riveted to the main axle assembly is what is carrying all the weight of the car. The axle shaft itself just runs in this. It doesn't touch the tube at all. There's no bearings in here or anything. It's all aligned off of this bearing and this bearing and the bearings inside. And that just allows that axle t uh, shaft itself to spin within the tube, transmit the torque to make the, uh, the wheel roll forward. This is again more common in heavy duty truck chassis, big Dana rear axles and uh, things like that, your big heavy semis and things like that. Not real common in, uh, in cars, but it was a feature and selling point that, um, you know, put Studebaker ahead of the league compared to the competition.
So I've got to bust the other side off. Um, I'm not going to make you watch that. It's even tighter over there. Uh, but now that I've got it figured out, it should be a relatively quick job. So I'll bring you back around to close things out here in just a minute. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, another step in the process of getting Elnor back up on the road again. Uh, I've got the back wheels off. I've got to move them back out to the, uh, the other shop so I can begin the process of taking them apart, getting them ready to go down to the wheel ride to get rebuilt. That'll be the next video in the series coming up. Uh, in the meantime, if you actually like what you saw, feel free, feel free to hit the, the thumb up, uh, like uh, like the, the like the video with the thumb up button or uh, maybe give the channel a subscription that's antique automotive acres hit that little bell icon it does something with the YouTube analytics lets you know uh, when I've posted new videos which I know it's been a while but I'm trying to get back into it again hopefully balancing my work commitments a little bit better so I can get some more content out there for you guys. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them down in the, uh, the chat window below. Uh, and I can be found, the YouTube channel, you can find that at www.antiqueautomotiveacres.com. Um, I want to send a thank you to everyone who's helped me out with uh, getting this up and going. Thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, appreciate it very much, and we'll see you next time.